All right, lads. The USS Nevada is a new battleship coming to the fifth rank of the American tech tree. The Nevada was a pre-war design, actually entering service in 1914, but the version we have in game is the 1944 configuration. The Nevada was the only battleship during the attack on Pearl Harbor, which actually managed to get underway and start moving by its own power, but it was still hit by a torpedo and several bombs, forcing the crew to beach her on some coral. The Nevada was then refloated and modernized back in the mainland United States. This is why the Nevada in-game looks fairly modern. It has a fairly powerful surface radar, as well as eight twin 5-inch guns. Despite having less main firepower than the USS Arizona, the Nevada has a much better secondary gun battery. Because of this, the Nevada is arguably the best battleship currently in the American tech tree, despite having two guns less than the Arizona. In game though, the Nevada is sitting in the 5th rank of the American tech tree and is currently battle rating 6.7 for Arcade Realistic and Simulator. So if you already have the Arizona, is it worth even grinding out the Nevada? And are the American battleships even worth playing? If you'd like to know the answer to that question lads, then stick around for the rest of the video. Alright lads, welcome back, and starting as always with the most important factor of a ship, and that is the crew interchangeability skill. We can see here that with a stock crew, we have a crew count of 1,299, and with an ace crew, that increases up to 1,567. I'm going to keep it very simple, when in War Thunder, your crew count basically acts as your health bar. The more crew you lose, the less able you are to fight fires, fire quicker, and that sort of stuff. This means ships with larger crew counts can take a lot more damage compared to ships with lower crew counts. So it really is very important to pump up those crew skills, especially in naval. The second most important thing about the survivability of a ship is obviously its armor. And the Nevada was the first ship to have the all or nothing armor scheme, along with her sister ship, Oklahoma. For those of you who do not know, the all or nothing armor scheme was a layout of the hull armor of a ship. There is no point armoring the bow or the stern of a ship because you can't really put that much armor there because the boat naturally gets thinner. So you may as well put a large amount of armor in the middle of the ship and then put all the vital parts of the ship inside this armored box, also known as a citadel. In theory, the ship could be penetrated anywhere outside of the citadel and still remain afloat. And because you saved weight not armoring the majority of the ship, you could increase the armor protection of that citadel quite a lot. This wasn't an American invention, the British first used this in the 1860s on the central battery ironclads. However, the Americans did bring back this theory back, and arguably did perfect it. Anyway, the main belt of the Nevada is around 14 inches thick, maybe a little bit less, around 13.8 inches. It's 343mm, that's the best I can work out in my head. Is it good enough to stop incoming rounds? Not really. You do have to angle your armor to be effective in the Nevada, so it kind of does limit your amount of guns you can put on target. You can't really get all 10 of your guns without turning fully on broadside, which does make you quite a vulnerable target. This ship was built in 1914, remember, so going up against the modern ships in War Thunder, it isn't the behemoth that you would think it is really. The Nevada does then have a armored deck of around 82 millimeters thick. This will set off the fuses of quite a lot of shells and it should prevent them getting into your citadel, into your ammo detonation areas and your machinery parts. But again, it's not amazing in my opinion. We then come on to the barbette, which is the armor surrounding or just below the turrets, which houses all of the ammunition loading systems. And this is 330 millimeters thick. Again, 13 inches of armor certainly is nothing to laugh about. You're basically immune from cruisers, heavy cruisers, but again, 12 inch guns at close range will go straight through this. The turret fronts from themselves though are very thick with 457 millimeters of armor. This is nearly 18 inches of armor thick. So most rounds aren't going to be able to penetrate you here unless they are incredibly close range. But the fronts of your turrets are a very small amount of the armor of this ship entirely. So while you do have the frontal armor of the turret is very good, but the rest of the ship is a little bit mediocre. So, the survivability of the Nevada isn't very good, to be honest. 
you'll find that a lot of the modern ships in War Thunder don't really do that well in terms of surviving that long because they have so many crew members like in the superstructure on the guns on the five inch guns they kind of just get killed by HE splash whereas some of the older battleships like the Emperor Matria whatever it's called the the Russian ships that everyone knows is OP and the Hayuga ships that don't really have a lot of crew members in the superstructure they tend to survive quite a lot longer because most of the crew is protected in the deck in real life obviously when you were in a battleship fight all of the crew members that weren't manning the guns would be taken down below into private and into armored decks this is probably best demonstrated in the battle of the northern cape where the secondary gunners of the shan horse forgot to come back to the stations which allowed british destroyers to get in very close and launch a torpedo attack so is Gaijin correctly modelling a realistic World War II battleship battle? No. It's a little bit annoying because it's quite unrealistic. You wouldn't, If you were being shot at by battleship guns, you wouldn't have people on 20mm anti-aircraft guns, would you? It's kind of annoying, but I don't really see how Gaijin could make it any different. Anyway, the fire director, which is the thing which allows you to get like a lead indicator... It gives us a fire direction for our 14 inch guns as well as our 5 inch secondary batteries. It does have a 100% accuracy. You would expect that though with the 1944 modernization. It did give it pretty good radar, so you can't really expect anything less to be honest. The ship will take 18 seconds to get a fire solution and it will update it every 10 seconds. This brings us onto our main caliber guns, our 14 inch Mark 45 guns. The 14 inch 45 means that the gun is 45 times in length the width of the barrel or the diameter of the barrel sorry. Generally a 45 caliber gun is pretty high velocity. It's not as high velocity as the 50 or 52 caliber guns though. And the muzzle velocity of the Nevada is pretty mediocre to be honest. But anyway if we take a look at the reload speed we reload every 40 seconds with a nice crew but if you're a stock plate that reload is every 52 seconds which is incredibly painful again just like the crew survivability getting your crew skills up is a very important thing in naval we then come on to the main ammunition and it is arguably the weakest point of the nevada and that is that this ship does not get semi armor piercing rounds instead we get a high explosive round as well as an armor piercing round the HE round contains 46.6 kilos of TNT, which itself is quite low compared to some of the other battleships in War Thunder, but it does still manage to penetrate 71mm of armour. We just really are lacking that large splash damage that you get with some of the bigger guns. For example, the HMS Marlborough's high explosive rounds have over 80 kilograms of TNT, and the HMS Hood, the high explosive or semi armour piercing rounds that that thing has, has 53 kilograms of TNT, and that's a semi armour piercing round not even a high explosive. Then the Nevada's high explosive round is pretty terrible. So what about the armor piercing round? Well lads, it's not much better. It has 15 kilos of TNT filler, which isn't terrible to be honest. And it has very good penetration as well. But the, the issue is that the armor piercing rounds generally will over penetrate most ships and the high explosive rounds won't do enough damage because it can't penetrate. The meta at the minute in Naval is to use semi armor piercing rounds as they can, they contain enough explosive fuel to do a lot of postman damage and they don't penetrate too much where they just go straight through the other side really. So while the high explosive rounds are great for taking out destroyers and the armor piercing rounds are good for shooting at other battleships, pretty much any other ship you are kind of in a little bit of a pickle really. It will happen to you pretty often that you'll get beaten by a heavy cruiser or a light cruiser spamming high explosive rounds at you because they can just set you on fire over and over. And your high explosive rounds, while they are powerful, you can't really fire enough of them quickly enough to take them out. Because a light cruise is firing every 6 to 10 seconds and you're firing kind of every 52 seconds. You can be beaten by light cruisers in this thing if they do manage to start fires and you have a low cruise skill. But you are going to struggle to take out light and heavy cruisers and stuff like that, which will be the majority of your opponents in this thing. Whereas other battleships around a similar battle rating will have semi armor piercing and will make mince meat out of all of the other types of cruisers in the game. This is without doubt the biggest weak point of the Nevada and generally one of the biggest weak points of the American tech tree in general. They just don't have any semi armor piercing rounds. The Nevada does also have a large battery of 5 inch 38 guns. These are the high angle of attack anti-aircraft batteries. This gives you excellent fire protection from incoming bombers as well as 
light ships like the coastal vessels. The 5 inch 38s are very good for explosive spam, they do start a lot of fires and you can use them pretty much as your main weapon against light cruisers. Not so much against heavy cruisers but certainly against destroyers and light cruisers to switch your secondary battery and spam HE at them. The Nevada also has a wide range of 40 and 20mm guns which again are your tertiary I guess battery or AAA battery against incoming planes. Overall though Nevada is a little bit of a letdown. The lack of a semi armor piercing round really does make it quite punishing to play, especially with the reload rate of maximum 40 second reload, that's pretty abysmal to be honest. Generally most World War 2 battleships could fire every 30 seconds, so it does kind of feel like Guardian are artificially nerfing some ships. All of these ships were designed with auto loaders, they were designed to be very quick, a real like the crew skill doesn't improve the reload speed to be honest, it's all hydraulic driven. So to conclude, is the Nevada worth grinding at the minute? Not really. And neither really is the American naval tree. The leaders in the naval meta at the minute are the Japanese, Russians and the Germans. Which does pain me as an Englishman, but that is the truth lads. While the British battleships can be quite fun, the Japanese, Russians and Germans are by far the best choice to go if you're looking to start naval. With the Americans really peaking in the 4.7 to 5.0 destroyer line, I wouldn't really recommend anyone grinding past that if you're playing American ships. While the American ships are cool, they just don't really have the top tier power at the minute. So just stick at the 5.0 with the Moffat, have some fun, grind some silver lines, and wait until a better American battleship comes out. Anyway lads, I hope you enjoyed this video, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.